Price, let me ask you this. I didn't know you owned a barbecue spot. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. Carrie's Barbecue and Soul Food. It's actually just Carrie's Barbecue now. We switched it over, you dig? But Carrie's Barbecue, um, it's been two years last month. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. We're, we, we just opened up now six days a week, you dig? First, we was only five days out the week. Now, you pull up on Tuesday, you get you some ribs on a Tuesday. And it's going down. And it's going crazy. Um, I own the restaurant. It's not no, like, play play. Like, I, my name's on every single thing. I, I just got my whole staff scheduling for this month. It's not for play. But it's a business. So it takes, like, the first two years. The first couple years, it's supposed to obviously take more putting in and you get putting get back um but for me i ended up getting a landmark in the ie for my restaurant so the restaurant has been paying for itself for all this time and now i'm starting to reap some benefits and it's going crazy we just switched the menu got the website got the hey, i ain't going forms, front it's some fire wild. up over there and i don't even eat meat but they really got some flame up over there so yeah. if you up over there in the ie check you out some carrie's barbecue because it ain't no game and ne starting next month i'm sorry and starting next month it'll be barbecue and soul food to go so you will no longer be able to sit and eat you gotta like, get up in there get up that's too many customers it's getting too quick it's getting too crazy i'm losing money because my spot's too small and people are sitting and, in and people want to stay and eat all day when it's like you know, this ain't the chill spot i gotta eat and leave. it's the grill spot yeah so it's dope though now what made you that because there's and you know you could have put your money in invested into any type of business but what made you choose the food business the restaurant business specifically well, at the time, my cousin, uh, my cousin who I was like raised with, City Rest in Peace, he had died. And um, like we were born the same year, like just like my brother, you know what I mean? So it like, it, it wrecked our family. And so all my family was just in like a super dark place. And uh, my mom at the time had hit me with the idea to get the restaurant. <clears throat> um, I'm like crazy about my family. And so my mom's husband, he can't get a regular job because he has like heart issues and things like that. So long story short, I just did it for my family. That's how I, that's how it initially started. I was just doing it for my mom and my step pops to run it. Um, it would be a way for my step pops to live out his dream, my mom to live out her dream, all that cool shit. And at the same time, I'm helping my family, investing my money, feeding the city, feeding the so city. Win, it, was win just, all it was all type of wins about it. Um, but then my mom and my step pops ended up not really one realizing it wasn't really what they wanted to do. But by then I was already in, you know what I mean? Money invested, heart invested, mind invested. And I'm not a quitter. And I saw like how I rock is like once I set myself on I mean. something, yeah, and like once once I'm in the water, I'm, I'm going, going to I'm the swimming. Other side, yeah, right. I'm swimming. So I was already in, like, all right, y'all out, I'm not quitting. And now we two years strong and it's only growing. Like it's crazy. Like people from Yelp, like people are calling my phone, like emailing me every other day trying to do shit with my restaurant. It's like almost annoying, but it's dope. Now let me ask you this. When it comes to the restaurant business specifically, what's your biggest pet peeve with it? Whether it's the food industry or the restaurant industry, what what bothers you the most at this point? Well, uh be well, because I'm I'm fully, completely obviously on the business side. So I don't have to deal with customers and things like that. You know what I'm saying? But for me, on, on the business side, it's not as easy. Like having a restaurant is not an easy business because you have to do so. There's so many more guidelines and and and, and codes you have to follow follow because you're dealing with food. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with something people are putting. It's not like stuff an outfit you never that people yeah, are, stuff you're not you never taking into consideration. You yeah. got to think about on every level. <laughs> yeah, you're so. not putting a, a hat on. You're putting food in your body. So we have to have like every single piece of the Checked game got to be yeah. right. Like every person in there has to have food handler cards. There has to be like the inspections got to be on smash. It just I got it makes me have to like be way more hands on than what I would like to be because <laughs> I would just wish I could invest my money and just be an owner back, right. and just get some dough back. But I have to be like on, on point. like I was talking to the manager of my restaurant earlier today, my uncle Greg, for like 40 minutes. We just got to just politic, like, because every day it's new things. People want new stuff. It's like new mess. And then with me being the owner, like I'm 25 and people are like, this my, my some of my family members are in the restaurant you know what i mean but i've been looking they, they pay for my school clothes growing up you know what i mean so i have to like yell at them sometimes or things like that so those type of situations are like 
those are the toughest things about it. But honestly, it's nothing. That's not even tough. Like, you know what I mean? It's the it's probably worthy, easiest, yeah. coolest thing ever because it's like I could employ my family on top of feed the city, on top of use this restaurant to to reach the city in different ways. Like, we're, we're working our ways, things for the kids, um, doing uh, back-to-school giveaways, just uh, poetry contests, dance contests, musical contests, all these different things all in the parking lot. Like, we're going to turn that whole establishment into just um, – a place for the kids in the IE and the people in the youth in the IE to know like this is like this is a safe spot because where the restaurant is at is in the projects. It's literally like in the hood right. of San Bernardino. <clears throat> people are losing their lives over there like right around the corner. Every yeah. week, right around the corner. You could count, you could bet your dollar on it. Like no questions asked. So we are providing that different energy when you come through carries. It's just it's trying fresh, to transform you know I mean? the whole hometown, man. We're yeah. trying to transform everything about wherever we've ever touched. Period. Straight up. So this is like that first step. And just like we and like like people are always like, you got to you know the only way to make a change is by starting where you are. And Think starting, globally, act locally. Period. And that's what Think it Layton is. Layton said that. Somebody super. And sick that's what that. it is. That's what we. That's how we rock. Now, in terms of being an entrepreneur. And obviously you're in the restaurant food business, but just speaking in general, for an entrepreneur, somebody watching this, what are some do's and don'ts when it comes to being an entrepreneur in the general scheme of things? It's kind of crazy. You just, I didn't realize I was an entrepreneur until you just right, said that. Right, until you bring it up like, and yeah, several businesses. It's it kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, but really, honestly... I, I, what I believe being a real entrepreneur or just someone, yeah, I believe what being an entrepreneur is because even if you, whether you have business or not, I, I believe investing in yourself yeah. makes you an entrepreneur. All the way around. Owning what it is that you're doing or saying is yours makes you an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have a label, we have like a LLC, a full fledged company. We drop projects and um, we have artists and producers signed to BOW Entertainment, Good Vibe Tribe. Um, the label we just put our the Stone Junction EP came out through the Good, Good Vibe, Vibe Tribe, Tribe right. which is another label that we have, so we actually have two labels, um, the restaurant on top of our clothing. Um, yeah, there's so many different things, but every single aspect of it we invest our own money, our money into. into it. We invest all our energy, all our time, all our genius into everything that it is that we're doing, so that it can be done differently. We're not trying to mirror what no one else has done. We're not trying to mimic what no one else has done. We're doing it our way so that it'll be done. Yeah, you gotta have a way, real vision. You know what I mean? That's probably the first thing I'll say to anybody trying to be an entrepreneur. Have a vision. That means being able to see things that other people cannot see. If yeah. you can't do that, it's hard to have a direction or for anybody to believe in your direction if you don't even know where the hell you're going. Sure does. So and, and you can and, and understand you can still live in the present. You can still live in the present, but know the, the direction, direction you want to be, the direction you want to see yourself. You know what I'm saying? Where you at least would like to see. Now we all know we can't control is gonna happen but I know what I would like to happen <laughs> so, we, so we do everything to make the variables add up to what we would like to happen yeah. every single day straight up 